Welcome to this video about power or sample size calculation for a mediation model. I will show you for different approaches to test for a mediation how to calculate your sample size. One approach is using a program like GPower. That's a free program for power calculations. A link to the download page is in the description of this video. But unfortunately, for most approaches to test for mediation, GPower isn't a viable option, but there is an alternative, simulation analysis, and we'll come to that topic later. There are many approaches to test for mediation. In this video I'll talk about four of them. The classical causal steps approach by Barron and Kenny, the joint significance approach, the Sobel test, and bootstrapping, most often used in the process macro by Hayes. First, I'll show you the two approaches that is using G power and simulation, and then we'll be looking for those four approaches to test for mediation, which of those power calculation methods we can use for that. In G power, you put in your alpha level, the power you want, in most cases probably 0 0.80, whether you want to test one tailed or two tailed, the effect size you're expecting, and the number of predictors, and you get out your sample size. So here one tail, two tailed, the effect size, the alpha error, the power, the number of predictors, and here would be the sample size as a result. The second approach is simulation. In the simulation analysis, you use a program that draws thousands of random samples based on a model that has the effect sizes you want to find, and you test how large a sample has to be in order to have, in our example, 0 0.80, that is 80% significant results. Because that's the power, the probability of a significant result conditional on there being a true effect in the population. And in the case of the simulation, you program the random samples in a way that there is a true effect of the size you want to have. Doing this requires programming knowledge, but fortunately, in most cases, you don't need it, at least for a simple mediation model. Because others, in this case Fritz and McKinnon, have done that for you. So as long as you're looking at a power of 0 0.80, they have done all those simulations for the different approaches for testing mediation. The only thing you have to do is go to their paper, to their table 3, and there you have to decide for the A path and the B path, how large is the effect. And you have the choice between small, halfway between small and medium, medium and large effects. And as a result you get the sample size for the mediation analysis technique you choose. For example, you want a small effect in the A path and a large effect in the B path, then you look in the column SL and look up the value for your mediation analysis technique. And that's it. A link to the paper is in the description of this video. Now let's look at the four techniques for testing mediation. Starting with Baron and Kenny, the causal steps approach tests four conditions in three regression models. The first condition is that there is a total effect from the independent variable to the dependent variable. The second condition is that there is a A path from the independent variable to the mediator. And the third and fourth conditions are tested together. The third condition is that there is a B path from the mediator to the dependent variable. And the fourth condition is that controlling for the mediator, the direct effect from the independent variable to the dependent variable isn't there anymore. That would be a total mediation or at least decreases compared to the total effect. That would be a partial mediation. And this fourth condition is the reason why you can't use G power for this. Because with G power you get a sample size you need to find an effect if in the population there is an effect. But here the fourth condition is the other way around. You want to know how likely it is to find no effect if in reality there is no effect. And that's not what G power is made for. So if you use the causal steps approach by Baron and Kenny, you should use the simulation results from the paper by Fritz and McKinnon. The second approach is the joint significance approach. Here only two of the four conditions from Baron and Kenny are used. You look whether you have a significant A path and a significant B path. 
If both paths are significant, then by the joint significance approach, you have mediation. For that, you can use g power, and to come to a total po power of 0 0.80, the product of the powers for those two components, for the test of the A path and the test of the B path, has to be 0 0.80. So one possibility would be to distribute the power equally. So for the A path and for the B path, you would use a power of 0.8944, and the product of those two powers equals 0 0.80. You can do this if you have equal effect sizes for the A and the B path. If you expect different effect sizes, you will get two different sample sizes for those two power analyses. And you would have to use the higher of the two. That's not efficient. So in this case, you should try out different combinations as long as those combinations lead to a total power of 0 0.80. That is, their product is 0 0.80. And you should do this until, for both power analyses, you get the same sample size. That is the sample size you need for the joint significance approach. So in most cases, even for this approach, I would use the paper by Fritz and McKinnon instead of trying out several different combinations of powers for those two paths. But if you want a total power of, for instance, 0.95, which you don't get from the paper, then this would be a possible approach. Then there's the Sobel test. The Sobel test makes an assumption about the distribution of the indirect effect, that is, the effect A times B. Unfortunately, this test is not implemented in G-Power, so for the Sobel test you would have to use the results of simulation analysis, like the one by Fritz and McKinnon. And the last possibility, process, or more general, bootstrapping. In bootstrapping, you don't have a distributional assumption. You estimate the distribution from the data. But in that case, you can't do a power calculation with G power because G power works by looking at a assumed distribution and calculating the power from this distribution. So here too, you would have to resort to simulation analysis and in most cases to the results by Fritz and McKinnon. Please keep in mind, if you use the process version 2, you use bias corrected bootstrap. And should, and should look up in the table 3 by Fritz and McKinnon the row bias corrected, whereas in process version 3 you use percentile bootstrap and use that row in the table 3. So what do you do if you use Baron and Kenny or Sobel test or bootstrapping and you want a power of 0.95? One approximate solution is calculating the power with G power as if you were calculating it for the joint significance test and then adding some margin of security on the number you get. Because if you look at the table in this paper by Fritz and McKinnon, you see that the values are quite similar. Well, maybe with the exception of Baron and Kenny, because there it really depends on some assumptions about the C prime path. But at least for Sobel test or for bootstrapping, I think you could use G power and, and the approach of the joint significance test and then add, let's say, 20% on that number, then you should be fine in most cases. I hope this has been helpful for you. You'll find other statistic tutorials on my webpage.